BBS. BBS. Black Burke Sugar, Bachelor's in Boxing Studies. Television! Fred Sanford of the Fisher Arts. When all is said and done, there's nothing left to say or do. Read BBS, BBS. So this is uh, Canelo Saul, Canelo Alvarez, Jamel Charlo uh, post fight from the undisputed pay per view. And I think a good place to start is with the comments of none other than Terrence Bud Crawford. And I quote this is from Twitter or X, whatever the hell it's called these days. Okay, y'all, I'm over at Twin Charlo. He's no longer on my hit list. He went out there and laid down and let Canelo spank him like he was his daddy with no type of resistance. Yeah, no lies detected. Uh, some of the post-fight opinions or adjectives applied to this quote-unquote fight. Reluctant, leery, too much respect respect was stemming from Charlo's behavior at the pressers. Everyone was like, oh, he's kind of calm. He's more this, more that, more professional, more respectful. Charlo blamed it on the fact that his uh, older brother by like a minute, Jamal, wasn't there. Jamal's the rowdy one, allegedly. Uh, yeah, so he was respectful. Uh, he was in survival mode. He's timid. He's cautious. I expected more. He got bullied. And that's really what it is, y'all. After a 16-month layoff, a jump of two weight classes, what did we really expect? Did we, uh, what did we expect? You know, we, we got what we got. And yeah, at the end of the day, we can safely say now that Jamel Charlo was chasing the bag. He said him and his brother was chasing Canelo for years. He was chasing that bag for years. That's, that's, what, that's what had happened. He was chasing the bag. He even admitted after the fact he felt the weight, he felt the power. And it's like I said on Fight Beat to the homies at fightbeat.com, uh, can you step to this? Charlo had never fought a 168 pound man with 10 ounce boxing gloves on. Never, never done that, never been punched by a man, 168 pound man wearing 10 ounce boxing gloves until last night. And he performed like it. Every time Canelo wound up to punch, Charlo balled up. You can see pained expressions on his face before the shots even landed. It just wasn't a good look, man. It wasn't a good look. He even boasted after the fact about not being stopped. That's not what we signed up for. That's not... And it takes me back to a quote of Holyfield, and I'm paraphrasing, but basically he says, people like us, like fans, we watch boxing to see boxers do things that we as the fans either can't or wouldn't do. In other words, getting there just to get the bag, that, that doesn't take a special person or a degree of talent to get there just for the bag. Now, it takes talent and, and, and whatnot and hard work to get to the point where you can acquire, where you can obtain that bag. But on the night itself, just getting in there, making no effort to win, you got countering opportunities. Canelo is so fucking wide open because he's loading up on every shot. You're not trying to do anything to him. You're not making the effort to counter punch him when he's wide open. So you, you laid on it. You laid it in. You went in for the bag. 118, 109, two times, two times. 119, 108. Disgraceful scores. Disgraceful scores. And, and the fight wasn't even that close. Wasn't even that close. My man was out jab. That was your only prayer, was to establish the jab, keep it in Canelo's face. You didn't even try, you were out jab. You landed 40 jabs, I think, in 12 rounds. Putrid rate, that's just a little over three jabs a round that you landed. Woefully outlanded in power punches. Uh, you stayed in reverse the whole fight, in retreat the whole fight. The delayed reaction, knocked down in the seventh. You know, it was a good shot high to the head, but even then, Charlo takes the shot. You can see he feels it like, ooh. 
Then he decides to take the knee. I don't know that he was not to a knee. I think he decided to take the knee. Now, I picked Canelo. I picked Canelo by a late stoppage. I thought Canelo uh, would eventually beat the fight out of Charlo. I thought Charlo would come out competitive, trying to win, slowly but surely have the fight beaten out of him. And that was not the case. Not so much. In fact, not at all. What next? Uh, Canelo's feeling himself. He's feeling his oats. No one can beat this Canelo. Okay, we'll sign that contract with David Benavidez then. The WBC is mandated that by uh, 2024, you have to fulfill your WBC mandatory. Let's see that fight next, Mr. No One Can Beat This Canelo. I'm not even saying Benavidez can beat you. I'm saying I want to see that fight. Canelo has two fights left on his PBC contract. The next fight very well could be Bud Crawford, could be Jamal Charlo, the older brother, who, again, I was glad to see him there at the festivities, uh, giving his twin some support, some moral support. Didn't end up working. So, yeah, Canelo, either Bud next or Jamal Charlo, but I'm hoping it's David Benavidez. You've been ducking him for two and a half, three years now. Let's finally... Uh, let, let's not leave that stone unturned. That's the one fight everyone wants to see from Canelo at 68. As for Charlo, going to move your ass back down. He was moving on up like the Jeffersons to 68. Move that ass on back down to 54 where you belong. I would suggest fighting Tim Zhu first. Go ahead and get your WBO belt back so you're once again undisputed. But then after that, Bud Crawford will beat Jamal or Jamel Charlo at 154. It's only a matter of time if Bud even wants that. I mean, I just read you his quote at the beginning of this video. Maybe Bud don't want it no more. I really wouldn't blame him. Uh, Charlo got the bag, but his stock has went down. It's really that simple. Read BBS, BBS. Black Burke Sugar, Bachelors in Boxing Studies. Televisio, Fred Sanford of the Fistic Arts. When all is said and done, there's nothing left to say or do.